Hello, hello, I am Mrs. Edwards and it is time to do math and I love it. Today we're gonna to be evaluating some trig functions, but we're also going to go through why these methods work. Let's start with evaluating sine of theta. All you need to do is go to the angle measure and the answer is the y coordinate on the unit circle. For example, sine of pi over six. If I go to sine of pi over six right there, then the answer is the y coordinate, which is one half. How about sine of three pi over four? We're gonna go to three pi over four, so here's our angle measure, and the answer is the y coordinate. So the answer is root two over two. One more, the sine of three pi over two. So going there to three pi over two, the y coordinate is negative one, so the answer to sine of three pi over two is equal to negative one. Now let's talk about why is the sine of an angle measure equal to the y coordinate. Looking at this diagram, I can go on the unit circle to any given point on that unit circle. We've got an angle that goes through that point. That angle I'm gonna call theta and the coordinate there on the unit circle, I'm gonna call x comma y. If you go from that point, so right there, that point, and you go directly to the x-axis, what happens is you have created a right triangle. If we identify the side lengths, here we have the hypotenuse. Notice the hypotenuse of this right triangle is the same as the radius of the unit circle. So the length of the hypotenuse is just one. The other side lengths to plot any point you would go over x and up y. So this green length right there, that line segment, that would be a distance of x, and then this side right here is a distance of y. Thinking back to right triangle trig, maybe the saying Sokotoa jogs your memory. The sine of an angle measure is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, opposite so the side length that is opposite theta would be length y over hypotenuse, which is length one. Sine of theta equals y over one. So sine of theta is equal to y. Let's go ahead and take that one step further. So sine of theta is equal to y. That's the same thing as saying that the answer to sine of theta is how far off of the x-axis you are. If you're gonna be above the x-axis, the answer is positive. Below the x-axis, negative. But it were how far away from the x-axis? For example, at this angle measure, at pi over six, the distance we are from the x-axis, we are above the x-axis a distance of 0.5. How about right there at about 45 degrees? We are above the x-axis, 0.7. There at 60 degrees, we're above the x-axis at about 0.9. Now these are just estimates. Um, the actual answer for pi over six is one half at pi over four, it's root two over two, and at pi over three, it's root three over two. So I've just estimated with a decimal. That angle there, we are one above the x-axis. So the answer to sine at pi over two is one. We can do this at any coordinate. As we continue moving along the unit circle, notice we are about 0.9 off of the x-axis, above the x-axis. So sine of two pi over three is 0.9. We can continue going all the way around and let's say we get here at four pi over three. This time we are below the x-axis, a distance of 0.9. So the answer is negative 0.9, which is um, negative root three over two. Okay, then right there, 
30 degrees shy of 360, so we're at 330 degrees, which is 11 pi over 4. Notice where are we? We are below the x-axis, a distance of negative 0.5. If the answer to the sine of theta is the y-coordinate, in other words, the how far off of the x-axis we are, let's look at this example of a Ferris wheel. So a Ferris wheel, we've got a seat, okay, and then this person rides the ride going around. This will help us to illustrate the graph of sine of theta. If we start the um, chair right there, so think about the angle measure right there, that is an angle measure of zero. Well, how far away from the x-axis is the chair right now? Well, it's on the x-axis, so at zero degrees, we are at a height of zero. Now the chair starts to move and is now up here. We're at an angle measure of about 30 degrees. So how far off the x-axis are we? About 0.5, so 30 degrees, we have 0.5. By the time we get to 45 degrees, we are at about 0.8. We get to about 60 degrees, and we are at about 0.9, right, distance off the x-axis, 0.9. When we're at the very top of the Ferris wheel, the highest we're ever gonna be we are one away from the x-axis. So the height of the chair is one. The chair continues to move along that circle. And so here we have at about 210 degrees, we've got a height of 0.9, continuing along um, 45 degrees past uh, the 90 degree mark. And we're gonna be at about 0.8. By the time that we get to 180 degrees, we are back on the x-axis, so a height of zero, so 180 is zero. As soon as we, we continue along the circle, we've dropped below the x-axis. So how far below the x-axis are we? Well, we're about 0.5 below. Continuing along, we're dropping further and further below the x-axis. By the time we get to 270 degrees, we are negative one because we're one below the x-axis. So 270, we're at negative one. Continuing along the circle, eventually we're gonna get back to the x-axis. So when we've gone one full circle, 360 degrees, we're gonna be to a height of zero again. Okay, there we have it. Okay, then 360. The ride, it continues on and on. So the chair has gone around one time, 360, and then let's say we go an extra 30 degrees, that'll be at about 390 degrees. And so at 390 degrees, we are above the x-axis again, about 0.5. And we continue along, and so by the time we get to 360 plus 90 more, which is at 450, we're going to be at the top, which is a distance of one above the x-axis. So notice 450, we're one above. Then by the time we go another 90 degrees, putting us at 540 degrees, we're back on the x-axis. And so notice at 540 degrees, we're going to end up with plotting the point at zero. Now, if we go 630 degrees, that means we've gone around one time, another 90, another 90, and another 90 brings us to 630 degrees, and we are one below the x-axis. And this Ferris wheel is gonna turn round and round, and that is the connection between the graph of the sine curve and the answers to sine. So just remember, sine is the y-coordinate. Evaluating cosine of theta, well, the answer to cosine of theta is just the x-coordinate. For example, the cosine of pi over 6. So I go to pi over 6, and the answer is the x-coordinate. So the answer is going to be root 3 over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 4. So let's go to 3 pi over 4 and the answer is the x-coordinate. So the answer is negative root two over two. Let's do just one more. The cosine of three pi over two. 
So go there to 3 pi over 2, and the x-coordinate is 0. So the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. Y is the cosine of theta equal to the x-coordinate. Going back to that same diagram, I go to some point on the unit circle, look at the angle that goes through that point, and that point is located at x comma y, build a right triangle by just connecting that point on the unit circle directly to the x-axis. We create, by doing that, a right triangle. The side lengths right there is the hypotenuse, which is a length of one. The distance we move to the right is x, and the distance we move up is y. Right triangle trig, so katoa, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we're looking at this angle measure theta, adjacent is the green line segment, hypotenuse is that distance there, one, so over x over one. So x over one, which is just x. So cosine of theta is equal to x. Building on to that connection, if cosine of theta is equal to x, that's the same thing as saying how far away from the y-axis are we? Okay, right, sine of theta was the height this direction, so how far are we away from the x-axis? Cosine is how far are we from the y-axis? So if we look at that angle there, the coordinate is how far away from the uh, y-axis? Well, it is 0.9. Now, specifically, if we're to the right of the y-axis, we have a positive answer. And if we are to the left of the y-axis, we have a negative answer. That point right there, how far are we away from the y-axis? We're to the right a distance of approximately 0.7, which is root two over two. This point here at 60 degrees, the distance we are away from the y-axis, we're to the right about 0.5. When we move to the very top, when we're right there, 90 degrees or pi over two, how far is this point away from the y-axis? Well, it's on the y-axis, so zero. The cosine of pi over two is zero. As we move past this point, okay, keep going there, notice we're now to the left of the y-axis. So how far away is this point here from the y-axis? Well, we're to the left, so negative 0.5. We can go to any coordinate on the unit circle and do this. So right there at this point, how far are we from the y-axis? We're to the left, so negative, and how far? Negative one. We will never be any further away from the y-axis than negative one. We continue to move around this unit circle, and let's say we stop there. How far is this point, which happens to be at about 330 degrees, which is 11 pi over four? How far is this point from the y-axis? Well, it's a distance of about 0.9, which is root three over two. Round and round and round we go. Okay, so that angle measure, we could keep on going. So look at, let's look at this in terms of the Ferris wheel. Instead of how high is the chair, which is the answer to sine, we wanna think how far away from the y-axis is the chair, and that is the answer to cosine. Starting right there at zero degrees, let's say the chair is right there at zero degrees. We are a distance of one away from the y-axis. So zero degrees has an answer of one. Okay, moving along, 30 degrees, the cosine at 30 degrees, how far is this point away from the y-axis? Well, it is at about 0.5. All right, then continuing on, we're up there at 60 degrees. The distance we are away from the y-axis, we're to the right, so positive, and that's about 0.8. By the time we get to 60 degrees, we're only at about 0.5 away from the y-axis. 
when we get to the very top of the Ferris wheel, we're on the y-axis, so we're zero away from it. So at 90 degrees, the answer is zero. We continue moving along the circle. By the time we get to 120 degrees, we are about 0.5 away from the y-axis, but we're to the left, so that's gonna be negative 0.5. Continuing on there, um, at about, what is that, 90 plus 45, so about 135 degrees, we are a distance of about 0.8 away. Right there um, at about 150 degrees um, from the y-axis, we're about 0.9, but we're to the left, so it's negative 0.9. By the time we get over here to 180 degrees, we are negative one because we're to the left, so negative and a distance of one. So at 180, we're at negative one. We can continue going round and round just like before. Okay, and we start coming back up. By the time we get to 270 degrees, we are zero away from the y-axis. So 270 is at zero. And then we continue around and around. And by the time we get to 360 degrees, we've gone around one full time, we are to the right one from the y-axis. So notice at 360 degrees, we're back to one. And as we continue to revolve, this pattern just happens over and over again. If we are at 360, so one full circle plus 90 more degrees, that's gonna put us at 450, and if we're at 450 degrees, we're on the y-axis, so at 450, the answer is zero. We add another 90, and we are to the left of the y-axis at 540 degrees. We are at, at negative one, and then, let's see, that should be negative one. And then by the time we get to 630, so one full revolution, and then we're to here at 630. So we are now back on the y-axis, so we're to zero. Going round and round, that pattern just continues on. So there is the connection between the graph of cosine of theta and the answers to cosine of theta. Evaluating tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is simply the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So if I want to find the tangent of pi over 6, I'm going to go to pi over 6. Then I'm going to take the y-coordinate, which is 1 half, and divide it by the x-coordinate, root 3 over 2. Little scratch work, 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. Dividing fractions, you want to take the reciprocal of the second fraction and change that to multiplication. I think of that as flip the guy and multiply across. All right, so the twos cancel. We end up with 1 over root 3. Multiply top and bottom by root 3 to rationalize. And our final answer is root 3 over 3. Let's take another look. Tangent of pi. So I'm gonna to go to pi and I just take the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So zero divided by negative one. Zero divided by any number is zero. So tangent of pi is zero. Let's do just one more. The tangent of three pi over two. So we go to three pi over two, taking the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate, negative one divided by zero, you can never divide by zero, kablooey, right? That is undefined. So the answer to tangent of three pi over two is undefined. Taking that one step further, it turns out tangent is really just slope. But before we get to the fact that it's slope, let's look at it in terms of Sokotoa. Here we have a point on the unit circle, there's the angle going through the point. We can go from that point directly to the x-axis to create a right triangle. Here we have our right triangle. Okay, there's the hypotenuse, a length of one. We go over x, up y. So this distance is x, and the red distance there is y. Toa, Soka Toa, 
So the tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. With respect to theta, the opposite is the red one, so that's the length of y. Adjacent is the green one there, so that is a distance of x. Now I just said that tangent happens to be slope, and you might be thinking, well, rise over run, rise goes with y, run goes with x, but I think of slope as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Why do we just have a y and an x? Well, let's take a look. If we draw in any angle, let's say they're at pi over 6, the coordinate there at pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Now, there is another point. Subtract the y's over subtract the x. See how that terminal side also contains the point 0, 0. So if you subtract the y's over the x's, you're really just subtracting 0. 1 half minus 0 over root 3 over 2 minus 0. So what ends up happening is that you just end up with y divided by x. So tangent is slope. When we go to simplify this, the square root of 3 over 3 is about 0.58. Now look at that, that line right there that would contain the terminal side. If we made that a line, do you see how the slope of that, it's not very steep and the slope is positive. The slope of that line is just a little bit more than a half. Okay, so how about there? For this one, see how it's steeper than at pi over six? So at pi over four, the slope of that one is steeper than the one that came before it. Now the coordinate there is root two over two, root two over two. So if you do slope, right, rise over run, y coordinate divided by x, root two over two divided by root two over two is one. Well, looking at the picture, isn't it obvious? If this is at a 45 degree angle there, we went over and up the same amount. The slope there is one, and that's why the tangent of pi over four is one. Now, if we continue on, so let's just backtrack here really quick. Pi over six, we got an answer there of about 0.58. The slope there at pi over four is one. Now, at pi over three, tangent of pi over three, what do you think? What's an estimate? See how the slope at pi over four is one? The steepness at pi over three, it's a little bit steeper, but not by a ton. Okay, so the answer is 1.7. The slope of that line is 1.7. Now this is the easiest one of them all. You know what the slope of a line is that's vertical. Vertical lines, their slopes are undefined, and that is why the tangent at pi over 2 is undefined. Of course you can follow the process and do the y coordinate and divide it by the x coordinate. So the point right there happens to be 0 comma 1. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. But just at a glance, I don't even need to know the point. Now over here, see how when my eyes hit it, like when you look, your eyes move from left to right. And as your eyes move from left to right, your eyes go down. So you know that this is a slope that's negative. And then what's the slope? Well, it's going through... Um, right in the middle. That's a slope of negative 1. Now you could take and take the coordinate and divide the y by the x um, and you're going to get uh, y divided by x is going to be root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2 and you'll get negative 1. But just looking at it, see how the slope is negative 1? Right, right there, what's the slope of any horizontal line? The slope is zero. If we went to 180 degrees, otherwise known as pi, the tangent of pi is equal to zero. And that is because, ooh, that says three pi over two. I'm so sorry. 
That should say pi, and I'm not gonna take the time to fix it, so sorry. But right there is pi, so we end up, if that was pi, the tangent of pi, because the slope right there is zero. Okay, right there, let's take a look at this one. Do you see how when your eyes hit it, as you look from left to right, your eyes go up? We have a positive slope, and it's going right through the middle. That's a slope of one. So the tangent at five pi over four is gonna equal one. Continuing around, okay, this, this um, line at four pi over three, it is steeper than the one at five pi over four. So the tangent at four pi over three, it's a positive slope. A little more than one happens to be 1.7. You can continue doing that all the way around the unit circle. Let's go ahead and quickly review. The sine of theta is equal to y. Okay, it's how high you are, um, how far away from the x-axis. The cosine of theta is equal to x. So the distance away from the y-axis. Now, let's just think about that alphabetically for a second. The coordinates, the x-coordinate is the answer to cosine and the y-coordinate is the answer to sine. See how that comes alphabetically? That might help you remember that x comma y is really cosine comma sine. So the answer to cosine is x, the answer to sine is the y-coordinate. Now tangent, remember is slope, rise over run, so tangent is y divided by x. Now we can also find the other tr three trig functions secant, cosecant, and cotangent. And those are really easy once you know sine, cosine, and tangent. The answers to the other three trig functions rely on which ones are they reciprocals of. Okay, so reciprocal functions. I think that in general, students um, latch on to tangent and cotangent. Yeah, those sound like reciprocal functions. But I don't know if you just have a love of alliterations. Santa sat sideways sipping sarsaparilla singing silly songs. No, danger, danger. S does not go with S. Signs reciprocal is cosecant. Don't think sign goes with secant. No, sign goes with cosecant and cosine goes with secant. Now the reason they're called reciprocal functions is the answers to these trig functions are reciprocals. So if you have the sine of theta is y, one divided by y, one divided by a fraction just flips the fraction over. So one divided by y is the notation for the reciprocal of y. So let's put that in action. Let's say I wanna find the sine of pi over six. So we go to pi over six, and the answer to sine is the y-coordinate, cosine comma sine. So the y-coordinate is one half. Relying on reciprocal functions, the reciprocal of sine is s no, not s. Okay, s does not go with s. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So if we want to find the cosecant of pi over six, it's the reciprocal of this answer. So we go to cosine comma sine. So we have the y coordinate at pi over six, but then we flip it over. So if we take one half and we flip it over, we get two over one, which is two. All right, how about the cosine of pi over six? Points come in cosine comma sine. So the x coordinate at pi over six is root three over two. We can find the reciprocal function if we know the reciprocal of cosine. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. All right, so secant of pi over six is just the x coordinate flipped over. So at pi over six, the x coordinate was root three over two. Flip that over and we get two over root three. 
Our final answer, we should rationalize. So if we multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of three, we're gonna have an answer of two root three over three. Last one, tangent of pi over six. So tangent is slope. So the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate, we've done that a time or two in this lesson. So one half divided by the square root of three over two turned out to be the square root of three over three. The reciprocal function for tangent is cotangent. So all you need to do is flip over the answer to tangent at pi over six. So if we take root three over three and take its reciprocal, we get three over root three. As a final answer, we should rationalize. So let's multiply the top and bottom by root three. So we get three root three over three. The threes cancel and our final answer is the square root of three. Now, if you already know the answer to tangent of pi over six, the fastest way to find the cotangent of pi over six is to flip that answer over. But if you don't already know the tangent of pi over six, you might decide that it's faster if tangent is slope, y divided by x, then cotangent is x divided by y. So if it's x divided by y, you might just go to pi over six and take the x coordinate, root three over two, and divide it by one half and get root three right away. One last comment about reciprocals. So if the answer to a trig function is zero, the reciprocal of zero is undefined. For example, if you have an answer that is zero, give me any fraction that equals zero. Zero over seven. The reciprocal of zero over seven is seven over zero, which is undefined. So last takeaway is reciprocal of zero is undefined and the reciprocal of undefined is zero.